Let's look at uh, question 3 now. Now, uh, this is a problem concerning the conservation of momentum. Now, it might look a long sum, and uh, as you have seen the solution, it might look rather lengthy, but there are a few basic principles, and once you follow strictly the rules that we have looked at in our class, over the many examples we have done together, it should be no problem. Now, the sum is uh, divided into two parts. There's a derivation part, and equally important, there is a calculation bit which follows up from the derivation that we need. Now, if you notice also, the bold face, remember, neat diagrams are expected for both parts and it's good for examination purposes to tell the examiner you know exactly what's happening in your mind especially as you do the problem. Because as we have seen in the lectures, that momentum problems, although on the surface might look simple, where you just need to consider a control volume, you have to think deeply. Anyway, let's get on with the question. Uh, you are asked to derive from first principles the horizontal force acting on a vertical plate that faces a horizontal jet of water from a nozzle, you are given m kilograms per second, having a velocity of v meters per second. Now, after drawing your neat sketch, showing the x, y axis, showing the control volume, and the fluid velocities and forces clearly label include all your assumptions. Now let's see how we would do it in solution. Now, if you look at part A, the assumptions that we make, very important, are that the water flow is steady, incompressible, and invisible. Steady, incompressible, and invisible. Now, we have looked at it many, many times in the lectures, and you need to state this at the beginning of your sum. The next important point that we need to state explicitly is the water jet is exposed to the atmosphere. As a consequence, the pressure of the water jet is only atmospheric. Okay, what we do now is we write out the momentum equation for the x direction. And we are given that the momentum equation is the force is equal to the mass flow rate Velocity leaving the control volume minus velocity entering the control volume. Very simple enough. Where V out and Vn are given as the velocity leaving and entering the control volume in the x direction. Notice that you have to explicitly state this in your derivation. The above then simplifies to
to fx is equal to leaving in the x direction is zero. If you look at your diagram, if it's clearly drawn, you can see as the water proceeds to the left, it never moves to the right. So there is an in velocity, but there is no out velocity in the x direction. That's why we have leaving as zero, entering as v. One line solution, and you get the force acting on the water. Remember, the water is moving and there is a sudden change in momentum which affects the water. Now, the next statement is as a consequence of Newton's third law, the force acting on the plate by the water is equal and opposite from Newton's third law. And that's it. You have done part A. Now let's go back to the question part B. You are given a nozzle, 6 cm exit diameter at the end of a hose discharges water at, at, to atmosphere at a volume of 5 cubic meters a minute. The pressure of the hose of 10 cm diameter just before the wall is 150 kilopascals gauge. It's so important that I will highlight it because we will come to this later on. Gauge means this pressure is above atmospheric pressure. Now, in this entire sum, we are not told anything about what atmospheric pressure is. But what we know is our pressure now, before the nozzle, is 150 kilopascals gauge. The water jet from this nozzle hits a vertical wall nearby. Okay, sketch xy axis, control volume, and the key fluid velocity. You're supposed to calculate the exit velocity from the nozzle. Next, you're supposed to calculate the force from the water jet on the vertical wall and the force magnitude and direction needed to support the nozzle. The data you're given for this question is that the density is given to you as 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Even if it's not given, you can always make an assumption about the velocity, about the density of the water. Now, let's tackle this second part. Looks long, but quite straightforward. So, I will whisk through quite quickly, as you will probably have uh, gone through it last week uh, when we circulated this. I hope that after this uh, presentation, you will have lots of questions to ask me concerning momentum equation. Let's start. The velocity V1 we calculate is equal to Q over A1. We know A1, okay, where A1 is labeled. If you look at what A1 and A2 are we are talking about, 
let me point you to where we are there okay wrong direction wrong uh, uh, labeling so let me erase that we should be pointing to two to two so two goes here and one goes there okay so we know the different areas given in the sum this area is the nozzle the, the area of the pipe this area is the area of the nozzle we got the pipe flow and we got the nozzle flow pretty large but in fluid mechanics this is not considered something to worry about because remember unless we reach about 0.3 mac which is 90 meters a second our water can be considered as incompressible now let's get on the mass flow rate is the density times the volumetric flow rate density times the volumetric flow rate remember our units is now 5000 kilograms per minute or 83.3 kilograms per second okay so we make use of the exit velocity v2 using the formula derived Okay, just plug it in and that's it. You get 2.457.3 Newtons. We now calculate the force acting on the support. We use our momentum equation with pressure. Okay, so if you look at the solution, you got P1A minus P2A. Now let's get the annotation off. Let's rub it out. We don't need it now. If you look at P1, the pressure is atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure at this point at the point two the pressure can only be atmospheric pressure so what happens is what happens is we have a difference of pressure let's get our sum back again okay the difference is on the left one the pressure is atmospheric pressure plus 150 kilo pascals on the right the pressure is atmospheric pressure okay this is important let's now look at the solution line you notice you have p1 and p2 but on the right hand side our p1 disappears sorry our p2 disappears and it's only p1 because we are dealing with gauge pressure whereas p1 and a2 p1 and a1 and uh, a2 are in fact 
cancels. So that what we have now is the mass flow rate velocity leaving 29.5 and leaving and entering the nozzle at 10.6 the effect of the gauge pressure I cannot overemphasize this can you see only the gauge pressure because at the point 1 and the point 2 point 1 and the point 2, the pressure on both sides, the atmospheric pressure can cancel out, leaving, leaving the extra gauge pressure which we see here, giving you an answer of 396 kilonewtons. Okay? So, this is the force on the water and in all true momentum equations, the force acting on the support is minus 396 newtons. That is 396 acting towards the left. And this is what you would feel if you're holding a hose, especially if the water momentum change is very large. And this ends this solution.